Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Pointwise Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this video, we'll discuss how Pointwise uses multi-threading to speed up the user experience. We often get asked if Pointwise is parallelized. Now, let me just say that's a pretty broad term. In the past, parallelism simply meant having a lot of computers all networked together and working to solve a specific algorithm all at the same time. These days, many of the chip makers are packing multiple cores onto the same CPU, giving programmers the capability of achieving that parallelized behavior with a single computer. We often use the term multi-threading to describe this behavior, although technically multi-threading can be achieved with just a single core, but that's a more involved story. The problem with parallelism is that it's not something that just happens. The CPU doesn't take your grid initialization algorithm, for example, and split it up among the cores all willy-nilly. Parallel processing, or multi-threading, must be designed into the code on purpose by the programmers. And some tasks are more easily multi-threaded than others. That's because some of the tougher problems cannot be easily broken up into parallel trunks to work on. For example, you can't just build a house without building the foundation first. There are some tasks that must be done in order. Despite the challenges inherent in the concept of parallelism, Pointwise does in fact use multi-threading in a few specific cases, and we're always working on more. The best example of multi-threading in Pointwise has to do with domain initialization. Depending on the size, initializing an unstructured 2D domain can take some time, and initializing multiple domains can take a lot of time, again, depending on the size. Fortunately, we've multi-threaded this activity, so if you initialize multiple domains at the same time, it's handled quickly via multi-threading. Now, I've created some really dense domains to show you how multi-threading can really speed things up. In the example that you're looking at right now, multi-threading has been disabled. So if I select a domain and initialize it, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1, it takes about three to four seconds. Keep in mind, multi-threading is disabled. So I'm gonna select all these domains and initialize them at the same time. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. All right, it's done. That actually took about 25 seconds. Let's switch over to an example that has multi-threading enabled. This example is just like before, except multi-threading is enabled by default. In the previous example, I was able to disable multi-threading only through the use of special command line arguments. Uh, from this point on, we're gonna be using the default multi-threading behavior. Let's go ahead and select the single domain and initialize it. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, okay. It's about the same as before and that's to be expected, but let's go ahead and select multiple domains and initialize that. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000. All right, that was a lot faster and it shows you how multi-threading can speed things up. We also use multi-threading in some of the examine features. That's possible because many of the metrics for each cell can be computed independently from other cells. So in those cases, the cells are easily distributed among the threads and each thread computes the metric for its portion of the mesh. When done, the main thread then brings together the partial results from all of the threads to form the final result, which is displayed for you on the screen. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.